Hello and thank you for joining me for another Alex on Tech and ITY TV interview. I'm joined today by Rod Taubman, Managing Director of Acclamation, and Cameron Sherrard, the Managing Partner at Acclamation. Welcome to ITY TV. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Alex. So I thought I'd just start at the beginning and ask if you could both please just refresh us all on the products and services that Acclamation offers to Australian businesses today. Um, sure. Cam, you want me to take this one? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, look, we at the moment our biggest growth there is S four Hana. We're doing a lot of system conversion, new implementation, selective data transitions. Um, Cam might want to expand a bit on those. Um, we're doing a lot of ERP in the mid market with um, uh, business by design. Mm -hmm. I am doing a lot of development services, um, a lot of uh, mobile and Fiori code remediations, data migration, managed data management services, security services, and also our SAP AMS. Um, I, I think I pretty much covered just from a high level. Sure. Did you want to add to that, Cam? Um, probably not much. Uh, probably only above that. We've, um, we've got some pretty close partnerships in place with some of the leading hyperscalers such as uh, Amazon, AWS, and Google. So we're doing um, quite a few migrations of SAP landscapes into cloud. Mm -hmm. um, and over and above that, I think mentioned, uh, Rob mentioned uh, the conversions into S4, uh, and they tend to sort of go together quite well. Sure. Well, onto the big news. Capgemini has acquired Acclamation to reinforce its partnership with SAP in Australia and further accelerate your now mutual clients' business transformations. So clearly, it's an exciting time for both companies and all of Acclamation's 100-plus employees. Uh, I guess... Uh, what would you like to say about this news? Well, I think it's exciting times for the the whole ecosystem. Actually, I think it will be um, change, be a change in the in the strategy for a lot of the other uh, SAP partners. Mm -hmm. The joining of Acclamation and and Capgemini would be a big change in strategy and competition because um, you know we're bringing our thirteen year local success in S four and cloud and across the mid market and the power of Cam Gemini, I think, as a low uh, global technology partner, I think would be a very formidable um, definitely raise us to the the tier one status, let's put it that way. Any comments from you, Cam? Oh yeah, look over and above that. I, th I think it's just a great opportunity for um you know, us to provide further services. We've, you know, we've as a hundred plus consulting organisation. There's a whole range of services of the, that that was spoken about that we've um, we've been able to provide. And I think that um, now becoming a part of Capgem and I, we've got access to this. You know, it's a, a global organisation with industry expertise and a whole range of additional services that we haven't been able to offer uh, to our organisations in uh, sorry to our customers in the past. So. Um, I suppose from, um, you know, our perspective, um, it gives us um, more dimension um, and uh, even, you know, better quality of service because we have access to um, what they call, you know, offshore and even nearshore um, services of support and AMS that we haven't really been able to do in the past. Mm, exactly. Now, I noticed that on the Acclamation website, you've won a range of awards, including three SAP awards in 2020, which really shows your dedication to your customers and the SAP platform. So what sets Acclamation and now Capgemini apart in the SAP space? Yeah, look, uh, it's, I think, look, when we went into this, um, you know, both Acclamation and Capgemini share a lot of the very similar core values around, you know, there was a lot looking at their value statement around uh, team spirit, honesty, modesty, fun. Um, and, um, you know, we also both shared very similar cultures that were really displayed in our really low churn rates for industry standards. So obviously our people stay within the organisation on both sides so that was a good indicator for us that I, I think um, really resonated. Um, so, uh, I, you know, just apart from that, you know, just in the SAP space, um, you know, Cam, I think maybe you want to add something around the, go, the whole go-to-market maybe. Well, I think, um, yeah, look, I think we as an organisation were quite leading and innovative um, quite early in the piece, especially with our alignment with hyperscalers. So, 
um, you know, when a lot of a large global um, system integrators were, you know, you know, aligning with hyperscalers, even at a, a smaller scale, we were doing the same thing uh, here in Australia. So I think we were probably very early to market um, and um, quite successful at, at, you know, a number of large um, lift and shifts into the um, different hyperscales. One of those was with um, Min Metal Group or MMG. Um, following that, we um, sort of were very, um, you know, forward, forward looking on, on where we thought the market was going with, with respect to SAP and, and their approach to their solutions uh, and their um, sort of commonly known ERP version called ECC, um, which is quite prevalent in the market, I mean, even here and across, across the globe. Um, but again, we I think we were, you know, very much ahead of the market and seeing where ECC was going and where SAP was taking it towards S4 HANA. Um, and we were quite early in the piece again at uh, looking at um, what complementary tools were available to us um, that could assist our customers or potential customers in moving their systems from ECC and converting them to S4. And, and we had some fairly, fairly uh, early success in that with um, in New South Wales with land registry services. Uh, where we did a successful conversion from ECC to S4 in a, in a six-month time frame on time and on budget. And then following that, we had a, a very, very large scale conversion at Coles Group, um, where um, we spoke, you mentioned before the question around the awards, where we uh, were awarded by SAP 2020 Partner of the Year for, um, for that conversion. And that, again, was a, a large scale conversion, but again, on time and on budget. So uh, I, I think from a an organisational perspective, we were um, very forward thinking um, for a small organisation as, as far as the cloud and as far as where SAP was going with their conversions to S4HANA. Um, and again, you know, securing some, some large scale um, conversions gave us good, good brand equity and trust in the market. Now, Acclamation has an impressive track record of successful implementations, like you were just talking about, for a range of well-known clients. But can you please tell us about some of these customers and the types of projects that they needed your help with? I mean, you just explained one of them just there, but uh, no doubt there are plenty more. Yeah, look, um, we can get a good job of explaining some of the, the larger customers, but we've also got a very strong presence across the mid-market. Um, so we're handling handling a, a range of like, like this. First of all, acclimation is probably about fifty percent of our revenues in the mid market as well. Um, so we've got a, quite a long tail. We we're just talking about that earlier, Cam and I. Um, and a lot of companies in the mid market, uh, you know, particularly fast growing ones, are looking for solutions and and turning to SAP for solutions. And we're helping them uh, a lot there. There's a lot also of. Um, uh, investments and, and um, sp uh, system splits where we're implementing new ERP systems as part of part of a divestment, for, as an example. Um, so recently there was Viridian Glass in that mix, Life Healthcare. Um, we did some projects there, both in, um, again, S4, HANA, and also in uh, Business by Design. Um, and look, we have a... We've also been quite successful in, you know, we're quite sticky. The customers that we've kept over the last 13 years have stayed with us. So there's a range of projects that just trail on and, uh, and we, we track and help them with long roadmaps of um, custom development, integration projects and uh, upgrades, um, uh, mo mobile projects and, and you know, helping in BI and data as well. Well, I always do say it's easier to sell to an existing customer than it is to find a new one. And if they keep coming back to you, well, you must be doing something right. <laughs> now, yeah, yeah that, exactly, Alex. Yeah. yeah. Now, obviously, Capgemini acquired you because you bring strength to Capgemini, but what strength did Capgemini bring to Acclamation that will turbocharge your capabilities into the future? Yeah, look, we've touched on a lot of those already, but, um, you know, definitely, you know, Capgemini and I have a strong sector focus. Um, you know, we're quite with the technical origins of what our acclamations came from. We sort of um, have expertise across the board, but um, I'm looking forward to sort of the synergies definitely from the sector point of view. Um, we, they have a strong offshore. We have zero offshore ability um, at the moment. So we're completely an onshore company. Um, they 
are, you know, they've got also we can help on their global brand. So there's a many um, large scale customers that they're helping with that we'll be able to support locally. And also we can extend our large, um, we are a group of fast growing AMS because they've got a very large AMS service um, that we're looking to capitalize on there as well. Cam, I'm sure I've forgotten a whole lot, a lot more. I'm not sure if you can weigh in on that. Oh, look, I think, look, I think um, you know, scale and capacity um, is pretty important um, as well as, um, as you can appreciate, Alex is, uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of SAP, I suppose, business in in the marketplace. There's a lot of organisations doing transformations, whether they're re-implementing SAP, they're doing conversions, um, transformations across the whole business, whether it's across finance or supply chain or plant maintenance and so forth. Um, I think that um, you know a, a lot of organisations across the country see Acclamation as a you know, great brand equity, um, great delivery experience, you know, I mentioned the on time and on budget, we've got quality service, um, but some of the larger um, implementations that, you know, there's, uh, that are going on the market or organisations are building up the business cases right now for, uh, a lot of those organisations might not see acclimation as a brand big enough um, to be able to um, tender to or to be able to bid for or support those types of implementations. I think partnering or, uh, you know, being part of Capgemini, um, you know, a lot of those organisations might see now, okay, well, you know, we can take away that risk factor because we do have the support of a big brand and we do have the capacity and we do have the access to these services and industry expertise. So, um, you know, we believe it's just going to expand um, the view that customers will have on acclimation and, and potentially the size of the projects. Yeah, well, obviously there's going to be a lot of growth and you just mentioned capacity, but, you know, is there going to be much of a transition time for you guys to, to merge together? I mean, is it sort of, are you hitting the ground running and you can instantly take on more capacity or is there a bit of merging time? And, and sort of on the same vein, is Acclamation going to remain a separate brand or will you be merging into the one Capgemini organization? Yeah, look, um, some good questions there and we, we're going through that at the moment. Um, you know, Capgemini have a great brand as well. So, look, the talk at the moment is that we will slowly merge into the Capgemini brand probably as early as September. Um, and, you know, there's there's a lot of um, time now spent in sort of organising the synergies between our, and our org chart and, and, and all the rest of those things that come along. But we are quite, quite similarly aligned um, and there are natural homes for each of our senior people within the organization but we will end up being a cab gemini company which i think i'm quite happy about sounds like you'll acclimatize very quickly <laughs> uh, yeah that's it it's in our brand yeah and, and um, so at the moment uh, yes we are uh, we're trading right now as acclimation a cab gemini company and yeah but yeah we're going to do our final Acclima acclimatization um, um, by September probably and, and retire the brand. And just on that whole capacity thing, I mean, it sounds like you can basically hit the ground running with extra capacity to take on all the extra work and you'll be working together very smoothly. Yeah, look, that said, we're going to gain extra capacity, but we've got a, a very strong pipeline at the moment. And I think even on top of the added capacity, we're still on a massive hiring run. I think between Capgemini and Acclamation, we're looking you know, there's probably about 20 open positions around around that. So it's, we've got a very, very strong roadmap. So we will be, let's just talk about numbers for the moment. So combined locally will be about 170 odd straight away with an offshore, dedicated offshore, just the, the offshore just for Australia is around 100. And we're looking to grow that by another hundred, probably in another in, in a year's time. So if you work that out, uh, work's cut out for us, um, and it's like two people a week we're on a hiring run. So um, anyone watching this that is in the space and um, um, is looking for the excitement, I think they should definitely reach out and contact us or so have a look at our careers page because there's a lot there. Sure. Now, we're in the middle of another COVID lockdown in Australia, and of course, this has been ongoing for 18 months, and a lot of companies have enjoyed digital acceleration through COVID. So 
How did the COVID pandemic, the ongoing COVID pandemic, ex- uh, affect Acclamation and its clients and Cap Gemini? And you know, what acceleration did you see, and, and what did you learn? Okay, maybe you want to go first on this one. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to start with this one. I think it was it was quite interesting because when uh, on the start of COVID, and us living in Victoria, I suppose we we got hit the hardest, I suppose, from across Australia, and, and both Rod and I, was, you know, prepared for the worst and hope for the best and um, things accelerated, things actually took off. And I know, I know that, um, you know, a lot of organisations, um, you know, were looking to re- reduce costs in things like innovation and um, not essential items. And, and one of the essential areas of IT that most organisations invest back into was, was SAP. So it wasn't, wasn't just, um, you know, things might... I you know, think people are working from home and we've got to, you know, people got to collaborate through Zoom and Teams and so forth, but we, but we need to keep functioning. The supply chain needs to keep functioning. We need to keep manufacturing. We need lights on. Um, and so a lot, of the, a lot of the projects, I think, that organisations um, put on hold in the past and might be patching up their SAP system or upgrading it to the next version or, or building resilience into it, which might have been moving into the cloud, we saw huge investments in those areas and, and like a lot of, um, I suppose, IT organisations in the, in the SAP ecosystem, we were, you know, one of the beneficiaries of that. So um, that, that's, that kind of supercharged our organisation at the start of COVID um, and I think it's, it's just continued from there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, um, it seems, you know, at the start, um, I, I was fearful at the start. I didn't know what, the impact would be um, to a lot of the projects that we had. I think out of everything, it was only one project that was postponed. Everything else was still going, flying ahead, plus a whole lot of extra extra things coming through. So the other things which um, it didn't really affect us positively, I guess there was a lot of liquidity in the market. So, you know, the companies uh, were definitely willing to spend particularly when um, there was resources that would typically be completely occupied as business as usual, now had time to sort of gate projects and spend time on on um, um, commencing projects that would have normally occurred probably later. So it actually got brought forward in many instances. Um, the other interesting thing is just around, I wasn't sure how the remote delivery model, so obviously we were in lockdown in Victoria, as Cam said, but... Um, this is the first time our remote delivery really got tested. Um, we had people re- delivering projects completely from home and I didn't know how that would work because sometimes we, we did a, have a mix before and but we'd have like war rooms and everyone was collaborating in the one room. But, you know, with tools such as we heavily work, we, we, we use Slack extensively and that worked quite well. We're still using it now. So just... Um, completely remotely delivered projects was was really interesting. And from a Capgemini perspective, I know Olaf um, was saying that he has a concept of no-shore um, where instead of onshore, offshore, wherever the expert is around the world in Capgemini, there are now 200,000 experts around the world. We can achieve project outcomes from experts distributed everywhere and still manage the customer success project success um, from a completely remote thing. And that, and that was it. A good a test was COVID. I reckon really stressed that out. And I, probably we weren't the only ones that experienced um, that. Yeah, no, it's definitely a common thread, a common story. And, you know, a lot of the digital acceleration, a lot of the online working that has been predicted for a long time happened. I mean, I remember reading about uh, telework being spoken about during the oil shock of the 70s. And, of course, back then they would, would have been lucky to have 300 wood modems. So we were kind of, even though we were unlucky to have COVID, we were lucky that we had the MBN that we had that allowed everybody to work oh, online. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, work, from, you know, be doing schooling online and all the rest. So, you know, thank goodness it didn't happen 10 years ago. It would have been a different story. Yeah, yeah it would have been completely, I agree. Yeah, good point, Alex. Yeah. Now, before I, I get on to the sort of towards the end of the interview where I ask you, some sort of more personal questions about uh, the computers you use. Is there anything else that you want to tell us about Acclamation and Capgemini at this moment? Um, look, um, we're look we're two weeks into this uh, process, so you know we're we've 
there's going to be a whole lot of messaging coming out at the moment. Um, but I, look, I think we've covered a lot of, a lot of the core things is that we were the perfect synergies. Um, you know, we went to market, we ran a process, we um, across the management team, we were all unanimous in saying that Cab Gemini was the right home for acclimation. Um, and that was a combination of a whole bunch of synergies and the, 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 the transparency of values and con concentration on, on people um, as really the driving force behind their organization. And we hold the very similar values. So look, I'm Cam and I, I'm sure are both really focusing on realizing those quickly. Um, and we want to keep that disruption phase of integration to a minimum because we've, We've got current projects on, um, um, on at the moment on both sides, Cap Gemini and Acclamation, and we really um, have a strong pipeline that we want to sort of um, have to get into, sink our, te sink our teeth into very quickly. Um, so, yeah, on Cam, is there anything else that I missed there? Yeah, I, look, I don't think there's much much more to, to add to that. I think, you know, would there be some teething, um, which is just natural, but um, look at, uh, you know, but on behalf of the management team and everyone, you know, we, we're just very happy with the outcome. Um, you know, we know we've made the right decision and we'll go through the teething, but um, overall we're very, very happy with the decision. Yeah. I also, one of the other things I was going to mention as well is just reading the, the core messaging from not only Olaf, but from the global um, CEO, Cab Gemini, very focused on SAP. That's a core pillar of their growth strategy. And also within that, they're looking at APJ, our region, um, as their core driver. So Kayleen on our call this morning is really focusing on and sees SAP is bringing it, the, um, that biggest growth of the pie of what she's after across the businesses. So, you know, that, that was another strong alignment there that we felt we're the right partner to deliver that success to them. Sure. Well, look, just to change gears a little, I always like to ask the people that I'm interviewing if they could please share their memories of their first computer. So I don't know who wants to go first, but what was the first one that you remember? I'll, let, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll go first because Rod's probably got a longer history of <laughs> um, making it, making and breaking uh, computers. But um, apart from what... what we had at university. My, my, my first personal computer was the, the Commodore 64. And Rod? Yeah, um, it would be a similar area, but uh, yeah, it was probably 20, no, 1983. I might have been about 11 or 12 years old. I got an Apple IIe. Yeah. Uh, and I, I remember some friends had one. I nagged my parents for one until I eventually won. Um, you know, back then, I think they were about a, gee, eleven hundred, twelve hundred dollars, which is probably quite expensive in today's today's dollar. And it was it was predominantly a gaming machine, is what I really wanted it for. But I, uh, um, I'm sure I told my parents a different story. But I actually did get stuck into coding, so I had a, a I had an, a a basic. I was writing some coding basic on that computer, and I tried my first application was a. I tried to write a choose your own adventure. You remember those books yeah, you used to I turn to the page and it would ask you questions and I would take you to through a different story and I would force my friends to play it every time they came over. <laughs> That's my um, memory. And was that the I've Apple got to, II? Now, I've got to ask you write a question now. Though. Yeah. Did you undo the computer and put it all back together and go to a swap meet and get the parts and replace them? And so yeah, look, later on I did go down <laughs> there. That, yeah, I definitely, just, definitely pulled it apart and put it back together. Um yeah, back in those days when you used to copy games across, um, we all yes, we all did that. Um, that your friends would bring their hard drive, the floppy disk drive, and we'd have to connect both to the port, and you'd have to. It wasn't like a USB port in those. They're these little flimsy cards, and if you press them the wrong direction, you would snap pins or bend pins. Um, so yeah, the the lid was off often every weekend. And and that was the Apple II, right? Apple IIe, yeah. yeah. Well, my first computer was in 1979. My father purchased a, an Exidy Sorcerer at the time from Dick Smith Electronics. And uh, the, the competition was the Apple I and the Commodore Pet. So um, long time ago in a galaxy <laughs> far, far away. 
But uh, look, uh, what is the did little... that have a tape drive, Alex? It, it did. Yeah, you actually there were there was somebody that uh, my father knew that uh, had the S one hundred bus and they had CPM and they had these big giant eight inch floppies. I remember seeing the eight inch floppies, and you could also get five and a quarter inch floppies. But there was a guy in Western Australia that was writing all of these uh, arcade copies. So he had Space Invaders and Pac Man and uh, Galactions and Centipede, and uh, we I still have the little Zilog joystick as it was and. Um, Again, it was all you know, serial ports and and little you know, little ribbons and yeah, very early days. I used to sit there as well, and we used to type in uh, things from computer magazines. One of the things we were doing was um, trying to figure out how to get the uh, the text to display Cyrillic characters because my uh, part of my cultural heritage is Russian. So um, it was all on the black and white. Uh, there was no green screens back then. I mean, they were available, but they were expensive. We had a black and white TV that someone had sold at a an RCA port in the back of, and um, yes, it was it was sort of four or five years before the Commodore sixty four. Those were the uh, those were the days <laughs> for sure. But can I also please ask you each to share a little bit about your own personal histories in the world of tech? Cam, you can grab this one first. Uh, I mean, apart from going to university and doing a, a computer science degree, I I left uh, university and started with a company called Mincom. Uh, which was which was an Australian software company. It was actually a, a soft, uh, an Australian ERP company that actually competed with SAP. Um, and um, following that, I travelled overseas for a little while. And then when I came back to Australia, I joined SAP um, directly. So I worked for SAP for 18 years. Uh, and then following that, I joined Acclamation and uh, now am a part of Capgemini. And how about you, Rod? Yeah, so, yeah, I studied um, information technology and um, science, physics. Um, and straight after uni, I was at AZ Bank. So I was in the electronic banking air, area um, straight after uni doing writing code for uh, EFT and ATM machines and doing a bit of security work around that. And the early days of the very early internet banking, just when I was leaving, that was when... It, the, the internet banking was starting. That's how long ago that was. Um, and then I had um, our first, my first business with um, a couple of other guys around domain names. So we were in the, the boom of the .com.au domain name rush. Um, so that was the first business. Then went from there into um, project management. I was working in um, uh, Optus Alpha, uh, Alpha West, which is a lot moves from software into infrastructure. Um, and that was the start of the virtualization craze, right? So pre-cloud, it was more on the, the VM side of things. Um, and during that time is I went back and I did my um, MBA um, and I thought I needed a bit more business um, from the tech. I just needed a bit more exposure than business. And that's where I sort of went out and got, had the appetite to go into another business and I was looking for opportunities where that would best be, and it was in SAP. Um, and it was around that time SAP were just did a big partnership with Adobe, and they had the very early um, interactive forms. So you had uh, Adobe forms, but they had the JavaScript in there so you could complete um, forms through um, the PDF reader, and you could submit it just by over the over the web so you didn't have to have the double entry of paper forms mm. so sap back then were bundling away and giving away free form licenses to their customers so you had a bunch of customers that had these licenses and no one else to, no one to deliver the um the outcomes so it was quite easy actually the sales there you can just walk in and go hey what's your most manual form hey you've already got the license you know you got it for free how about we put it together and we automate that process and that that was the start of acclimation. That's how we started the business 13 years ago. Um, yeah, it's been a long, a long journey from there. Well, it's always fascinating to hear. In fact, I normally like to ask how a company started, but you've just explained. So that's, uh, yeah, solving a need and uh, figuring out how to make better use of the technology you already have is uh, definitely, you know, that's a win. Right. So look, from the past to the future, uh, how do you see acclimation and cap gemini evolving over the next couple of years and how do you see the entire industry evolving through to say 2030 
Cam, you can take this one. Yeah, no, Habit, I, I'm, um, look, I'm, I'm quite bullish in this era. I think um, one of the things that, that's come out of COVID, I mean, we, Rod spoke about the remote consulting, but one of the things that's come out of COVID is, I suppose, the, the limitation of resources in the market. You know, um, you know, we're, we're on a big island here and there's a lot of projects um, with limited limited capacity of people and, and normally you get an influx of educated SAP um, resources that come into the market. Um, so I think, I, I think personally over the next, you know, three, five, even longer years, I, I think the demand's probably going to outstrip supply until it starts to find an equilibrium of, uh, of delivery. Um, so I, I think it's, it's going to be busy. I think it's not just ourselves as an organisation with Capgemini that's going to be busy. I think it's, it's the market in general is going to be busy. SAP globally have an, an initiative called RISE, which is creating more flexibility for their customers as far as um, leveraging hyperscalers as, uh, and as well as their um, commercial flexibility they get from their licensing. So, you know, that, that's, that's creating more demand um, for expertise from service providers like ourselves. So um, I'm not seeing any slowing in the market. In fact, I'm probably seeing an acceleration. So from, from our perspective, it, it's, it's certainly a right time to, um, to, to, to merge with Capgemini to meet um, as, be, as best we can that demand um, because it's certainly there in the next five years. And uh, any comments from you, Rob? Um. Yeah, look, as you as you know, Alex, you know, that type of time frame is nearly it's infinitely long in IT. It's so it's quickly changing. Age. That's right. Yeah, it's a entire so you know, um it's hard to predict, you know, a, a couple of years out. I know obviously SAP business suite is is, is retiring in twenty twenty seven. So there's the existing ECC customers that will have to move across. Um, not all of them will do so. There's an opportunity there for them to also potentially defect to other other platforms. Um, but you know, SAP have they've been around for a long time, and they will make things work. If we're staying with SAP, I know there's a be a suite of acquisitions to come in the in the in the following years that and new technologies pop up. There'll be you know, um, opportunities that might be migrating into edge computing, AI, um, you know, uh, these these areas, uh, Internet of Things, um, and there's continuous opportunities in, in technology, as you know. Um, we have, you know, successfully stayed within our core expertise, which is SAP, and we, I think, will continue to be on that wave, and I think we will divide up uh, and look at look at other technologies. Capgemini have got a breadth of um, of services across technologies, and we just need to now understand our our lane very well and work out how to work with our, the other parts of the business because that was the way to, I think, really service our customers. Um, and that's one of the other things which we get, I guess, with this acquisition is before we're an SAP and we 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 could refer some of our colleagues in, um, but now we can give a more uh, encompassing solution to our customers. So add value, add value there. And that's come kind of the messaging that will be coming in when we now um, go to each of our customers and talk about what it means for them. Yeah, well, no doubt it's a great force multiplier to have the two of you join together. And I'm also always reminded of Yogi Berra, the famous baseball coach in the US, who always used to say, prediction is a really hard thing to do especially when it's about the future. <laughs> He's had a lot of funny things. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, that is a good one. Yeah. So, look, uh, my second last question is always simply to ask if you could please each share some of the best advice you've received to help you get where you are today. So, um, Rod, maybe we'll start with you this time. Um, okay, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, probably not adv advice, not told to me, but just in, I remember reading some um, commentary on Warren Buffett and he said something around build a business where you, you basically thrill your customers, delight your customers um, and just spend all your time on working on how you can best service your customers. And if you have thrilled customers, uh, how did he say? He said, no one went, ever went out of business by having a bunch of customers that weren't thrilled, right? 
So basically, if you have thrilled customers, that that is your 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 uh, a really good piece of advice, right? Just focusing on that, um, and it's not easy to do, of working out ways to thrill your customers. Um, and I guess look, if you look at 13 years and the amount of projects we've done and the amount of outcomes we've had to create without having any roadblocks, um, it's a difficult challenge, definitely in any service game that is. Um, and the other one would probably be around, you know, you hear, probably heard many times about sur surround yourself with people smarter than yourself, right? Um, you know, it's Cam and I here talking to you right now, but it, it's not us that have carried acclamation. There's a whole team of people behind us that have come with us and we've lent on them seriously for, for the, the work they've done. There's some heavily talented people. I'm not a techie. I mean, I'm, I was a techie back when the Apple IIe days, right, we talked about, but I have not done any implementations myself. So a lot of people are doing, working very hard and are very loyal and, I, and, my, and my gratitude is to them as well. And they're with us through this journey. Yeah, well, it's similar sentiments. That I'm not going to um, put forward any famous quotes, but um, it, it was certainly very gratifying seeing or reading all of the, the messages on, on LinkedIn or any personal SMSs that, that we'd receive from anyone that's been there throughout the whole journey um, because whether they're ex-colleagues from, from SAP that have moved to other organisations, whether it's our family or, um, you know, people that have made us successful because um, whilst, you know, we're, we're making decisions at, you know, this managing level, um, as Rod said, there's, there is 100 people underneath us that have made us successful in these projects from a delivery and even a sales perspective, um, and then a whole network of people that have advised us along the way. So I suppose, you know, uh, my thanks is to all of those people that have um, supported us um, have been there when we've um, had disagreements, um, and you know we've, we've we've had that roller coaster of great times and and tough times, and and we've we've been through all of them. Um, but it's good getting to the end, and uh, you know you obviously you look at both of us, and we've got big smiles on our, on our faces, and 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 we've taken a lot of a lot of people along with us on that journey. So you know I'm quite thankful that they were there with us. So what is your final message to ITY viewers and readers? and to your current and future customers and partners? Um, look, I will say that, you know, we've come from, you know, Acclamation has been a SAP Gold Partner. Um, we've been competed in the company of the Tier 1s um, and we stood up on our own as an Acclamation and now we've sort of transitioning to Capgemini as we've discussed and we might, we might inherit in the very near future the Capgemini brand. Um, but not to think of us as a small, as a large, don't think of us as a large company. I think we are, we are big, but we, you know, but we will, we, uh, I'm endeavoring to appear small, all right? The same engagement, the same people, the same um, high touch that, that the customers are used to. Um, and our commitment is to, to maintain that through this. So we are now big but we will appear small is what the goal that I want to have. Cause that's, I think is some of the magic source of what acclamation was. And now Cap Gemini, um, we have to maintain that. So that's probably a key message to our, the, your viewers and to our existing customers. And, and from my side, I'm excited um, over and above that being able to um, just provide extra dimensions of services. I mentioned them before. Um, that we, we just haven't been able to do in the past. So, for example, we might have um, existing customers where we, we do a whole range of things in the SAP area and they might come to us and say, what about this? And it's just, you know, something that we might not have been able to do in the past for one reason or another. Um, we've now got, you know, a, a global organisation that just has um, so many, um, you know, they support so many different industries and provide so many different services and, and product lines and so forth so that, um, for our existing customers or, or, or future customers, I think it's just a great opportunity for us to provide more services and better quality services to them. So that's that's what we're looking. Well, I'm looking forward to even more. Well, Rod Taubman and Cameron Sherrod, thank you very much for your time. Best of luck with the merger and with all your customers and clients. And I hope we can talk again in the future. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Alex. Thank Fantastic. Thank, thank you. Bye -bye.